Friends, I'm Pastor Milton R. Hawkins, pastor of Temple of Deliverance, Church of God in Christ, the church where Jesus Christ is always magnified and never, ever is he compromised. Welcome to another TOD experience. We're located at 369 G.E. Patterson Avenue in the city of Memphis. We worship the Lord each Sunday morning at 745 a.m. and 11 o'clock a.m. Two great services where you will be tremendously blessed by the word of the Lord. I encourage you to come and bring a friend with you. You will enjoy this worship experience. Also Sunday night at seven o'clock p.m. we meet again and then Tuesday night our night of deliverance pastoral teaching and miracle anointing service. That service is at seven o'clock p.m. and that is an awesome service. People are coming. The church is just packed out on Tuesday night because we are teaching the Word of God and that Word is powerful all by itself. I encourage you to come and be with us on our Tuesday night services, 7 o'clock p.m. Well, I'm a big fan of the Apostle Paul and I love his writings. I love uh, the ministry that he projected and I love how God used him. In the book of Ephesians chapter 6, a very, very familiar passage of Scripture, uh, beginning around verse 10, Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Because my fight is not against you and your fight is not against me. He said we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers, against the rulers of darkness in this age, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Don't you know the believer's strength is being fully clothed, having everything God wants us to have. Having the whole armor of God, not just what you want, but the whole armor of God. And that is the strength of every believer. You'll never win a war with an arguing of words. You'll never win a war or win a battle by cussing folks out, mistreating people, working tricks behind the scenes to bring someone down. But the strength of the believer is having the whole armor of God. Let's go into today's telecast. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all to stand. He emphasizes the word stand because the believer has to stand. I want to talk to you for a few moments from the subject, the strength of the believer. The strength of the believer. Bless your ushers. History will reveal that an individual or a nation that reflects weakness will eventually be destroyed. But a people or a nation that reflects strength will many times be catapulted to victory and success. Regardless to how things are occurring in our world, 
God still wants his people to live a victorious life. The Apostle Paul is a figure in Scripture who is a favorite of most Christians. His life is the kind of life that you and I can easily identify with. Many of us have had an Apostle Paul experience. Many of us did not start out so good. Many of us have come from unkind backgrounds. But a loving God looked beyond our faults and beyond our projected failures and saw something in us that he could use for his glory. But the problem is that once we switch sides, once we leave the enemy's side and come over to the Lord's side, sometimes we forget where we come from. Sometimes we try to act like we've always been like we are now. Sometimes we try to fool folks and make them think that we've always been good, that we've always been in the church, that we've always been saved, and nobody has ever always been saved. Even now, you got to ask for forgiveness constantly while you are saved. But you got to watch that enemy because he does not like for us to reflect back on our dim past. But it's important to remember that God brought us out of something. It's important to remember that the Lord brought you out. And I know that when God brought you out, it was a marvelous work. And every now and then, you don't have to park there, but you do need to look back over your shoulder sometime. You need to look out the back door of your life so you can see where God has brought you from because it strengthens your faith. And if there's ever a time that we need our faith strengthened, we're living in that time now. I mentioned earlier how the church is under attack and how God's people are under attack. And sometimes people are asleep in the church. And you got to be very careful not to let this society lull you to sleep. You've got to be very careful not to compromise your standards and compromise your values because what we believe, what the old church taught and what the Bible says is still right. It does not matter how man compromises, how man will let anything go. We have to stick with God's word. We've got to believe in the truth. There was a time that you, if it didn't sound right, you knew it wasn't right but now it sounds somewhat smooth and those people who don't spend enough time on their knees can get easily tricked. Those people who don't spend enough time in God can be easily fooled. And you got to be very careful who you listen to because you got some itching ear preachers out here now. You got some people that like to tickle your fancy and tell you what you want to hear because they are scared to tell you what thus saith the Lord. If I tell the folks not to do this, if I tell the folks not to do that, they'll leave the church. They'll stop paying their tithes. Well, God called us to be holy people. He didn't call us to be compromisers. He didn't call us to falsify information. On your job, if you falsify, you'll get terminated. And I believe if you falsify this, God will terminate you after a while. You God knows that all of us have come out of something. And, and I want you to talk to your neighbor, but I don't want you to tell them everything. But do tell your neighbor this. Say, neighbor, I don't have time to tell you what he brought me out of. But it feels good to be out. Oh, hallelujah. <laughs> That's a word for somebody right there. I don't have time to tell you what he brought me out of. Matter of fact, it's none of your concern what he brought me out of. But I do want you to know it feels good to be out. Anybody glad he brought you out? (laughs) 
Because all of us got some backgrounds. All of us have some kind of past. And even if you were brought up and raised in the church and you never got out there and did anything, if you were still not saved, you still had a sinful background. Thank God for the ones that didn't hardly do anything. But not hardly doing anything still won't get you in heaven. And sometimes he that loves least gives least. Uh, he that was forgiven the greatest will give the greatest because they are thankful. There are some people who don't play church. Look at your neighbor and say, he's talking about me. He's <laughs> some people don't play church. Some people, when God have brought them out of something, when they get in here, they're not going to play games. They, they played enough games out there. And when they get in here, it's time to be real. But you got another group that all they do is play games. Brought up in church, still playing games. Do whatever they want to, still playing games. But game time is over. Games ought to be on the field. Games ought to be on the basketball court. Games ought to be on the football stadium. Games ought to be at the soccer match. But here is warfare. Here we're learning how to trust in Jesus. We're learning how to depend upon his word. We're learning the ways of God because God does not operate every time the same way. God chooses different methods to bring us out. God uses different forms and different illustrations to get your attention because what it takes for you, it may not take for me. And what it takes for me, it may not take for you. But God knows how to get each and every one of our attention. And when God calls your name, when God calls your number, you ought to know that the Lord is trying to talk to you. And I don't care how bound you are, when the Lord speaks to you, you got to get out of that situation. Look at Lazarus. Lazarus was dead. Lazarus was bound by head and feet. But when Jesus called his name, he came forth. He couldn't run, but he hopped his way to Jesus. He, you may not can run, but when he calls your name, get up and do something for Jesus. My brothers and sisters, these are some of the most difficult times. These are some of the most challenging times to be a Christian. Because today's Christian is ridiculed. Today's Christian is made to feel like a second-class citizen. Many people think we are fanatics. Some say that we are sectarian in our views. Others call us too emotional. And they say that's the only thing about the Pentecostal church is that it's too much emotion. And you know, the Lord does not want us to just, just go crazy and and holler and scream. The Lord wants us to sit in his presence. And the Lord wants us to be still and see that I am God. But the Lord also says, make a joyful noise unto the Lord. All ye lands come before his presence with singing. 